Hello. I want to share a quick example of how to potentially create a street using a topo solid in Revit. So here I've got a sample, a sample site plan here. And if I go to the site level view, here I will need to change my crop box here to display that land mass that I've created here on the left or on the right here. So let's say this is the parcel we're, we're talking about here. And, and let's say that uh, we need to cross this entire plane here and create a, a road. And as you are aware, in Revit, if you click on a topo solid, you have the subdivide option that places a 3D model directly on top of the topo solid. Uh, solid. However, the issue then becomes roads are, are, are tend to be depressed. So how do you account for that? One method is to simply uh, uh, go to modify and choose the, the cut command here. And cut command will let you slice through the model and create a, a separate 3D solid from the existing topo solid, uh, solid. So if I use this tool here and I click on the, the topo solid here, I can draft a road. Let's say, for example, it, it goes in this direction, by example. This area will then become cut out of the topo solid. So if I hit OK, you'll see here in 3D, that gives us a separate solid mass, a separate topo solid. With that being said here, I can simply come into here and duplicate. Um, let's call this uh, John Street, for example. We can, we can create a, a copy of the topo solid. And in the copy, I can adjust its thickness. I can go to here to edit type. And I can, for example, shave off six inches from the thickness of this mass. Let's say 49 foot six is the, is the thickness. Hit apply. And you can see I lost six inches here at the bottom there. In turn, I can then align the bottom of this object to the bottom of that object using the align command or AL. So align to here with this and it moves down, which effectively drops here or depresses this mass from this mass here. In turn, I can then click on this object here. I can go into edit type and I can basically grab the grass here, for example. Uh, I'll do a little search for asphalt. Asphalt, uh, let's use uh, asphalt pavement, for example. Okay. And then here you'll see that the the materials change. So if I look at shaded view, you can see here that I've got I've got asphalt here next to next to grass. I've got a six inch difference in, in change in elevation. Adjacent to that that object, I can then build a sidewalk, for example. So again, in the site view, looking down from above, I can click on this topo solid, use subdivide, and I can create uh, create a sidewalk. Let's say we'll do it here adjacent to the street here i'll do it here for example and you'll see here this is on top of the grass here i can then choose that object and add a material here so again if i use this button here i can launch the materials i can uh, find a a suitable material for the sidewalk for example i'll use precast as an example and I will then see that there is a, a sidewalk material here. Uh, obviously, you have to be careful here. This is uh, this change in elevation is six inches, and you've got the thickness of the sidewalk. You know, you, you might want to, you know, make this slightly thinner or make an adjustment for the for the thickness to compensate for the thickness of the future sidewalk. Uh, I made this an eighth of an inch, so in turn you'll see it still it still appears here as a sidewalk above the street, and then along this edge I can then build a, a, a curb. A curb. If I go into here, component model in place, 
I can then, let's use the street as an example, or um, a floor as an example. I'll grab a floor, or you can grab the topo solid category here. Hit apply, hit okay. And here you can you can use the, the sweep command. And the idea is that you load a sweep that represents the cross section of a curb. And so under the sweep command, you can pick the path along these 3D edges here. And I would simply choose, you know, perhaps the bottom of this of this street here. Kind of hard to see this without launching black and white. I would pick these edges here and make sure you collect them all because this line has to be continuous. And you'll see you'll navigate through these change in elevations here to ensure that the path is completely continuous. And there it is, start to start to finish. That's the path along the entire length. I choose OK, and then here you load a profile. I haven't created a profile, but let's see if I've got something that could be useful in this list. Uh, normally, you'd want to create your own. I've got a, a Street Curb custom profile here that I drafted earlier. And then here, you'll see the profile right there. It's, is, uh, it's flipped over, obviously. So I, I use the flip command here. I would... Uh, I'd have to rotate 180 degrees. So you'd have to load that profile family. And let's see if I've saved it. So let me check and see if I actually saved that file. This is why it's important to save these objects. I've got it saved here. So here's the drawing. And I noticed I was facing the wrong direction in my street. So I will grab this object here and this object here, leave that vertical line alone. I will flip over this object here, and I will erase the originals. So now it's heading in the opposite direction. When I load that model into the project, this one here, for example, it will flip the profile. If I use an override, it will then flip the profile here. And, and again, you have to manipulate these, these settings here. This is still facing the wrong direction for whatever reason. Let's make sure we're doing the right thing here. It should be site plan in Danola. And let me flip it over again. So this is flipping vertically. So maybe it was the right direction. I, I'm not sure what happened there. So I'll, I'll flip it back. Let's see. And then I erase these parts and pieces here. This is called John Street Curb, a Revit family profile. I'll load it into the right project. This one here called Indianola. Hit OK. It should flip the drawing as soon as I execute an override. It'll flip the drafting over. And it uh, doesn't seem to be cooperating with me. If I click on this object here and use the flip command here, It seems to be oriented in the wrong in the wrong direction. So I will try something else. I will simply grab this object here and flip it over vertically here. And I will trim these edges here in an attempt to update that model. I'll load it back into the project. Sometimes it becomes a trial and error exercise. And hit override. And you see here now it, it obviously it's facing the correct direction. So a matter of experimenting with the original profile family and getting it to work here. If I accept that profile and accept the model, you'll see here that it runs the entire length of the street. And in cross section here, it becomes a curb before it reaches the sidewalk. And there you've got your model. You, you might want to choose this object here, edit in place, grab that profile, sweep, and change the material here. Um, concrete precast, for example, hit OK. And it becomes the same material as a sidewalk there. So uh, you've got a 3D model that now has a, a contour that, that, that follows the contour, sidewalk and street, you've got a curb, 
And so this becomes a nicer looking model. You can then decide to eliminate these, these lines here, these topography lines from the sidewalk surface. Once you're, you're done with this exercise, you can simply choose this sidewalk here. Actually, let me, let me confirm that that's actually even available. Edit sketch. I don't think, actually, I take that back on a, it's a distinction we have to make. Uh, this topo solid here doesn't have a set of properties here that allows me to edit its, its information. Here it says inherent contours. I doubt this is going to work, but if I turn this off, I believe the, the cross section is going to be completely straight. Uh, nothing's changing here. So let's do a little experiment. The idea is to get rid of these contour lines. If I click on this street, this is the name of the topo solid, edit type, this button down here called contour display, it lets me choose this option here and turn off the lines, the contour lines of the street. Hit apply. And let's see if the sidewalk inherits those changes. And it doesn't seem to, I don't know if it's tied to these here. At some point you might wanna hide this from the grass. This is the grassland here. I'll do the same thing. Let's turn those off and see what happens to the, the, the sub. There. Oh. So this subdivide option inherits the manipulations of the topo solid beneath it. So this topo solid here had its contours turned off. Therefore, this object here inherits um, it does not, I turned it off. I, it does not inherit those contours. I believe in that case, uh, it will simply hide the lines since it's uh, on top of this topo. And there you have a clean looking site, for example. A little easier to, to work with. That's how you, you deal with, with streets conditions. This here um, shows multiple segments here. So if I were to ever create a cross section through this. Let me do it from the site level. You'll see here, there's another bit of a problem. If I take a look at a cross section here, you'll see you'll get three distinct masses. You get this mass, this mass, and this mass. In here, under modify, you can use the join command and actually click on that object, that object, and this object. And it'll join all the topography together and remove those vertical lines Although here, they'll still be distinct models. You still have this model, this model here, and that model there. But it'll hide the vertical lines. It'll blend the models together so you don't have the vertical cross-section. Okay, that's a quick tip on creating streets and sidewalks and curbs in Revit 2024. Okay, good luck.